Unreal. I totally dribbled. <laughs> I was having so much fun, I dribbled. Do you ever do that? Yeah, I, I, I do it all the time, actually. Sometimes I'm working on my guitar and I'll look down and they'll be like, dribble. TPS bibs. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Hey, everyone. Welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Nick here. Hello. That was glorious. That was groovy. Really lovely. It's nice to get a bit of volume. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling, Dan? I'm good. I'm good. A little bit spacey yeah. today. Dan had his uh, his jab yesterday, and it's making you a little bit kind of. Well, I, I didn't sleep very well last night. I feel fine. It's just a bit, yeah. you know, lack of sleep. It's like I've had a big night out. Yeah, I reckon a good few whiskeys tonight, you'll be fine. Uh, well, you know, why well, should tonight be different than any other night? <laughs> cool. Right. Um, here's a question we get asked a lot, not least since. Um, we did the Harmonious Monk with Jam Pedals, so, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, Dan? Where you're, yay. Uh, uh, hmm? Yay. Oh, yeah, yay. Where you're um, forthright about the stuff that you have. Uh, d uh, disclosure. Oh. So in the spirit of disclosure, the Harmonious Monk is uh, mine and Dan's signature pedal with um, Jam Pedals. Mm -hmm. But since we've done that, we got very interested in Harmonic Tremolo. The question is... Mm -hmm. Vibe, indeed, or harmonic tremolo, and we're getting asked it a lot. Um, Have you seen the castle? I've seen a man in the high castle. No, it's the Australian film, The Castle. No, <laughs> where he goes to court and argues that you know it's the vibe, it's the vibe of the thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. Anyway, sorry, you said the vibe, and I just went. Yes. Well, actually, um, while we calm down, perhaps now would be a good time to uh, roll VT and explain a little bit about what vibe and harmonic tremolo are. Regular amplitude tremolo is easy enough to explain, and it's been around since the 1940s. It's simply the volume going up and down. Harmonic tremolo, uh, you might also hear it referred to as harmonic vibrato, is an effect that first came along in the 1950s, and it's two tremolo signals out of phase with one another, which of course would create phase cancellation. However, in the early Fender Brown face amps, you'd have one tremolo dealing with high frequencies, the other one dealing with low frequencies. As the high frequencies get louder, the low frequencies get quieter, and vice versa. <laughs> Thank you. 
There's no pitch modulation going on, which you'd find in some other amps, magnetone for example. <laughs> What you're hearing is simply the phase relationship between the two tremolos working against one another. Now the Univibe came along much later in 1968 and was intended to replicate a Leslie rotating speaker cabinet. As it turns out, it didn't sound much like a Leslie at all but it did have a unique sound that was used to great effect by Jimi Hendrix, Robin Trower, and we should probably mention Trey Anastasio as well. The Univibe is a four stage phaser and it uses a light bulb and light dependent resistors to control the amount of phasing. So it's the relationship between the incandescence of the bulb and the light dependent resistors that create this unique throbbing sound of the Univibe. Many companies have taken different approaches to the vibe sound over the years, not least in the digital modeling world, but nothing really sounds like the original design. Using discrete transistors for the gain stages and the all important bulb and light dependent resistors is what gives the Univibe its unique sound. That was fascinating. Wasn't it? Incredible. Absolutely. I've learned something, Dan. Indeed. <laughs> okay, so you know, I I now you know how the uh, effects are made. Let's have a listen to them. Let's just do a basic AB. Um, if we compare, I don't know, the Gypsy Vibe yes. and the Supro. Um, Great. Give us a play then, Daniel. So you hear the difference in the modulation. Yep. It's, I was, I want to say more obvious and more kind of churning in the gypsy vibe. Yeah. Let's turn the depths up so you can hear more of it. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that really brings out the differences. <laughs> What a great sound. <laughs> Far out. So you know, I, I don't suppose we really need to say much more about that other than the, in this particular example of harmonic tremolo and that particular example of vibe, the difference in the modulation is quite different. Yep. What's interesting about the Supro is a lot of people choose it because it sounds quite vibey. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the confusion comes from. Yeah. By the way, Gypsy Vibe, made by Pedal Porn, a brand that um, have sent us some stuff down the years, run by a guy called Chris King Robinson. Chris is no slouch of a player. He um, uh, has his own band. This indeed is his most recent compact disc. He's so prepared. Music. <laughs> in CD format. <laughs> and he sort of puts me in mind a little bit of Jesse Davey because, you know, both of them are into that sort of post Hendrix, Robin Trower, Stevie Ray right. tone palette. Mm. And both make pedals that are very much in that vein in that vein yeah, yeah. so yeah that's that's where the gypsy vibe comes from we've included it today because it turned up yesterday <laughs> literally <laughs> um 
The jam pedals retro vibe because it's jam pedals and it's probably our favorite vibe yeah, in small lovely. pedal format. Yeah. Others ought to get a mention like the dry bell vibe machine. Wonderful. Is really good. Um, the full tone Deja Vibe Mark Three, I think it was, whatever the latest one was, right. is, is really good. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of good ones out there. Mojo Vibe. Yeah, Sweet Sound stuff. Mojo Vibe. Yeah, yeah. I think we might have done a show years ago. We did. So we could have chosen any, but the, the, the Retro Vibe is probably our fave of the current pick. And Harmonic Tremolos, yeah, Supro, because it had been on my board for so long. Yeah. And that's the one I used. And it was but, doing that job, wasn't it? In, well, I yeah, as I come to realise, yeah. I was using it more in a vibe. Yeah, instead but, of, the, yeah, right. But it's not until you hear a vibe that you go, oh, okay, oh, yeah, it really yeah, is quite yeah. different. Yeah. And then Harmonious Monk, obviously, because it's uh, mine and Dan's signature pedal. And we think it's the best one out there, but uh, that's up to you. Um, cool. So that's the basic difference between vibe and this harmonic trem. Out of interest, let's, con let's compare the retro vibe and the Harmonious Monk. Great, okay. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. we'll do exactly the same thing. You play and I'll switch. Okay. <laughs> So there's definitely common ground. Yeah. In in the way that they sound. The thing I think with the retro vibe is you can't ever not make it sound like a vibe. Yeah, right. You've always got that really thick, heavy, soupy thing going on. But with a harmonic trim, you can definitely dial it back. Yeah. To sound less like it. All right. So one of the things that I always struggle with with vibes is they sounded really great, really loud. But if I ever tried to play them in any sort of context in a band thing, I just they just got lost for me. And I, well, I remember with the Mojo vibe, I practiced with it at home and stuff, and what well, else sounded great. I remember getting the gigs, and I'd have it like all the way up, just yeah. trying to get some cut through. And one of the things about phases is because they do that thing where they are there's phase cancellation there. There's it's almost a psychic, uh, psychic, uh, a psychoacoustic um, byproduct was where feel you feel the loss of those frequencies yeah. especially in a mix and and not only the loss but then also the coupling of those frequencies because the bass end in that gypsy vibe is bonkers yeah let's put some um overdrive on a sec check this Sorry, that's mad. Um, it, it yeah, and uh, uh, we'll put the harmonic tremor and do the same thing. Yeah, um, I'll start on the first thing as that's where I was. Um,
it's such a cool sound. It is unreal. So, the, so the most immediate thing with the harmonic trem is that it never doesn't sound big. Yeah. You know what I mean? No matter where it is and it's uh, in that crossover point. It doesn't disappear. Always, exactly. There's always yeah. note there. Which is not a, a better or worse thing. It's just if you're going for a vibe sound, you you absolutely have to have a vibe totally. because it's part of that. Yeah. But if it's too, like Dan was saying, if it's just too much and it gets too soupy, you might find, which is how I ended up with the Supro. Right. That it's doing the vibe thing a bit. Yes. But not to that kind of full on soupy vibe thing. Yeah. And as you saw with the Harmonious Monk, what I did is I turned the mix and the depth down a bit so that the whole thing just got a bit less subtle. Yeah. Sorry, more subtle. More subtle. <laughs> um, to try and control some of that overt. And yeah. certainly in a band mix, you know, might be that everything at two o'clock there, you're the, the place where all pedals should be set. <laughs> Works great when you're playing at home, but then when you get out, you know, that's partly what the throb control is there for in the gypsy vibe but it doesn't quite do the same thing it's not a dry wet mix no it's that's, that's like a depth control isn't yeah. it yeah 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 okay um so the next question what what came to mind as soon as i stepped on the fuzz with the gypsy vibe mm -hmm. is that the order of vibe and fuzz and this is a perennial issue yeah um the fuzz we're using is just my standard Jimi hendrix um fuzz face seems appropriate on its own sounds something like this. Gotta have it, man. Right, that is awesome. What a great sound. Okay, yeah, so I think the battery might be dying, actually. It's a bit biasy. Not quite as woolly as it normally is, but that's right. right. We can live with that. Okay, we can live with sounds that. good. Uh, all right, so <laughs> we'll, here, we'll go to the Gypsy and then the Retro. Yeah. When, this is the fuzz before the vibes. And then I'll swap it while you're playing and the fuzz will be after the vibes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, rather abrupt stop. That's what I was hearing when we were doing it before. With the fuzz before, the vibe after it, what you then get is that Ernie Isley. Yes. Um, that was a phaser, just uh, before anyone starts yelling at the screen. But you get the fizzy top, Yeah. the really fizzy top. Just have a listen to this. <laughs> It fundamentally changes the character of the mid range. Yeah. Because if you've got you've got that fuzz and all those square edges, right? And then you're putting that into the vibe and then you, you're getting all the phase cancellation. Swap it around, you're getting that phase cancellation, and then you are distorting that. And it is limiting all those not you know, just the, not just the gain, but because the frequency is created in the vibe. It's basically limiting the whole thing. So you're getting this compressed version of the fuzz. Um, yeah. What's the, um, explain to me what buttons I need to press. You play it and feel it and see what you think. Okay, so it's just set it up and then that's the fuzz before and then two is the fuzz after. Okay, so we'll turn you on. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Loads more aggression. Yeah. Uh, I know we've covered this before. What then gets really interesting? Because now we're into the now we're into the subject of Jimi Hendrix and Robin Trower. Mm -hmm. Because not in every case ever, but the Trower uses his overdrive after the vibe, right? Yes. Jimmy used his fuzz before the vibe. Mm -hmm. I mean, he probably used it everywhere, but best known for using it before. But the key ingredient is what the amp is doing. Yeah, right. So by putting the vibe after the fuzz, you do get that change in mid frequency mm -hmm. and you do get that slightly more um, harsh high end, I think. I don't know whether that's because the mid frequency has gone away. But By it, having the fuzz first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if the amp is overdriving a bit. It's doing what the overdrive would do after the fuzz. Yeah. So what we're going to do now is set the Gladio up as if it were the amp overdriving. We could make the amps overdrive, but it's loud enough already and we don't want to mess with that. So we're going to approximate it there being a, an overdriving amp by there being an overdriving pedal. So let's see where we are with the Gladio. So this will be fuzz into the vibes into the Gladio. Yep. Yep. And then when I change it, it's going to be the vibes into the fuzz into the Gladio. Yeah. So the Gladio is always last. Yep. So we're using that side of the Gladio to get a bit of overdrive. Okay. Not exactly like an amp overdrive, but... Sounds unreal. Quite a lot of overdrive. It's very loud today, which is largely a good thing. Um, okay. So we're we gonna do this. Yes. So we're gonna hear the fuzz. We've got to turn the fuzz on. Yep. Into the vibe. So play. I'll turn the fuzz on. hilariously loud sounds awesome I, what I'm noticing is less of a difference exactly because we've already got that compression stage at the end of everything yeah 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 <laughs> so you can see this whole debate with you know whether Jimmy uses uh, the vibe first or last the way that he set his amplifiers was all about that yeah it's more important well it's it's equally as important as which way around the... Now, we're not saying there wasn't a difference. Yeah. We're saying the difference is evened out quite a lot if the amp is overdriving a bit. And of course, back in the day, what they're going to be using, crank marshals turned up, they're going to be overdriving. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. And I actually, to, to, to bring it on to Robin Trower, I think that's maybe why he gravitated towards using the vibe before the overdrive. Right because he's used to that amp. Well, let's hear, let's hear the in. overdrive before and the overdrive after. So, okay. here we go. Here's the one I did earlier. Yeah, and we'll use the same overdrive sound, yep. shall we? Yep. Thank you. 
totally. So that Ernie Isley high-end, crazy high-end uh, fizzy thing on top yep. is before. solved yeah. when you put the overdrive after, after the vibe. Yep. It's funny, because for years I would always insist on using my vibe after, because that's how Jimmy did it. Right. But it only makes sense if your amp's overdriving a bit, or you've got another pedal doing a bit of a limiting after that. Yeah, totally. It couldn't be more different yeah, than yeah. sounds, simply because what's going on before them or after them. You know, the gain stage is before them or after them. Yeah. Nice. Okay, well, hopefully that answers a bunch of questions about overdrive, vibe, fuzz. I mean, we have done this stuff before, but I think it's a pretty good demonstration, not least that it's crushingly loud today, and I, for one, am enjoying that. Don't I'm, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm absolutely. Do we have the um, numbers on? Yeah, okay. What did we hit, Simon? Pretty loud. Pretty loud. We've, we've broken... I was looking to check if we were flipping. Yeah, broken we were, Simon's glasses. It was you couldn't see it. It was definitely going orange on the uh, level meter there. Nice. Uh, did you feel... I feel tired after a day's filming. And I well, think the volume has got something to do with it. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it does... It energises you in one respect, because I find it so exciting, but at the end of the day, it's like, oh man, you know, yeah, you, you, yeah, you really feel it. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit about harmonic tremolo then. First thing we want to do, Dan, is hear the difference between the Supra and the Harmonious Monk. Lovely. Seeing as we get asked that a lot. Yep. You want to play for a bit? I've done lots of playing in my yeah, you, average Jimi Hendrix on, impressions. On, no, no, you're on fire <laughs> at the moment. That sounds amazing. Subtle little thing that yeah oh, yeah. Man. So at the end there, one of the things that we wanted to put on the harmonious monk was a to be able to control the depth, but also to be able to mix it back out. Um, because yeah. one thing I was finding with the Supra, just purely personally speaking, was that that the relationship between enough depth in the effect to get the sound, mm. but then it being too overpowering. Mm. Um, Anyway, this is not a Harmonious Monk sales video, but that's why we did it. So you'll see that there's considerable overlap between vibe and harmonic tremolo, but then the controllability thereafter, I think, is what is what makes it kind of interesting and, and have to have different uses. Sure. So I mean, I think the the my assumption is that the fuzz before and after and the overdrive before and after is going to have similar results. Uh, possibly. Because we're doing that. Yeah. So, um... Let's see. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to swap guitars just to get my head out of the Jimmy thing for a minute. Okay, okay. Um, this, you know, black Pick strap. Pick up another strap and do a Black strap, thing. tune to E flat. <laughs> 
So let's um, let's try and and also to give you a bit of respite from the endless whatever that is. This will be interesting. Oh yeah, at volume. This is going to be, be amazing. Interesting to see if this will cope. Yeah, <laughs> I got fifty quid. Says I don't know. It's uh, Epiphone Casino that I replaced the pickups on, and of course it will howl like a banshee. Shall we see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> really interesting yeah I didn't change um, I didn't change anything on the guitar there when the fuzz was before the before and after yeah. it was radically affecting I had the guitar down to about three yeah and what you heard there was a clean sound yeah when the fuzz was before because the guitar's hitting the fuzz and then when the fuzz was after it was just doing its fuzzy thing after the and why is that uh, because of the relative input and output impedance yes Yes, yeah, so, so because that, the fuzz is going after, the change of the whole impedance relationship. That is crazy interesting. So we know, right, and we've, we've talked about this before, that whether you have your overdrive or fuzz before or after your harmonic tremolo in this case, significantly affects the resultant tone. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind that a lot of us play with our volume knobs on 10 a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. But what that was doing was having an absolutely radical effect on the guitar controls. Let's just show you that again a sec. So I'll be on the bridge pickup here, on the bridge yep. pickup. Um, and I'll put it on, let's see, three. And if Dan just turns the fuzz on now. And just to prove it, prove it's on, I'll go all the way up to, all the way up to 10, 10 right across. The, and then- Where do you go from there? <laughs> and then we'll come back down to three, all right? Okay, it was worth doing this whole video for that alone. Yeah. I had no idea that would happen. Yeah, well, either did I. So, 
It makes complete sense when you think about it. It also chimes into that whole thing of your fuzz really does want to be after your guitar. Yeah. Yeah, it does. There's, I think that having the overdrive after the modulation solves so many of those problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? That if you are a dynamic player with your volume control, then, and you want that, that interaction, it's got to be there. It's got to be directly, yeah. like, you know, directly from the guitar. But I think we're talking about two different things though, aren't we? Because I think it then makes sense to have an overdrive after. Yeah, totally. After, it, after the modulation. Yeah, that's, that's so your fuzz comes first. Fuzz has got to come first, yeah. right? Oh, sorry, that's what you're saying. Exactly. I think that the over, having the overdrive after it, yeah. it solves a lot of those issues with the high end frequency yeah. Annie Isley thing, if that's not your bag. If you still want to get that uh, that relationship between all this and the fuzz, but you don't want the yeah thing, having the overdrive after the modulation. Yeah solves so many of those issues yeah there we go then people that's the that's the learning it's fuzz it's viable harmonic tremolo and actually harmonic tremolo is a different case because <laughs> it's a different thing in an old amp it would have been in the end but let's take the vibe fuzz vibe and then an overdrive and what the overdrive is doing is kind of doing the job of the amp overdriving yeah. so yeah. either an overdrive pedal or an overdriving amp okay look we've done loads of blooming fuzzy overdrive horrible i want to turn some delay and reverb on dan yes. get you to play some nice clean stuff sure to hear the harmonic tremolo in that environment <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
It just takes you away. Sorry, a bit of silliness. I turned them all on and then turned a lot of the controls up and then turned some overdrive on. <laughs> and then we were in a post-rock band. Man. <laughs> just, well, I, I, I don't know. That was, um, I was expecting one thing and we ended up in a different place. Right. Yeah. Um, clearly, uh, harmonic tremolo and vibe sound quite different from one another. Mm. And I think if we had a, you know, 1960 Fender Super in here, it would sound very different again, like, you know, the real, real thing. Of course, of course. A, a different kind of quality again, but there is considerable crossover. Yeah. Yeah, you've got that, depending on how soupy you want to go. Um, the, the thing about the harmonic trem is that uh, it will never get to that point where you've, you're, you're sort of losing those frequencies. Yeah. There are times when that's, you have to have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, um, if you want to get that, um, what's the, the Floyd Romeo Cigar or whatever that tune is, you know, that with that really amazing uh, phasey tone, you have to have those phase yeah. cancelling frequencies going on. Now, that the, the harmonic trim doesn't do that. No, no, no. But there, but... <clears throat> Likewise, there are times when, you know, if you are if you're jumping into a really massive solo that you want to project, it's going to be hard to get that, especially in the mid frequencies. It's going to be really hard to get that out there yeah. with with a vibe pedal. You kind well, of got to let the vibe pedal do its thing, haven't you? You can't be playing loads of notes. Well, you can. Plenty of people have done it, but if you try and do that thing where you're playing loads of notes, you sort of need to let it do absolutely, its job. absolutely. Where you know, and um, one area, what well, it was. I wanted to get down to play some clean stuff towards the end there because, of course, we were introduced to harmonic tremolo via Joey Landreth. And, of course, his approach has got nothing to do with Hendrix or um, Robin Trower or mm. any of those guys. Yeah, His approach is, you know, slide and a very different thing. And in that world, vibe is just way too much. Sure, sure. The harmonic trem gives you that wobble that you kind of yep. need. Of course, you need them both, right? You... Yeah, totally. <laughs> Magic. I, I, I found that fascinating. Yeah, me too. Um, it was nice to hear some loud amps. <laughs> really, and, really and was. Slightly surprising at times. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. There you go. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And our dear friends in Australia. Would be Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland. And in the description box below, we have some links. Yes, uh, to Sweetwater. And if you click on those links and buy stuff, they invent a time machine. They go back in time. They find some old photo cells that are no longer allowed to be used. Nice. They put them in the Make Bigger machine. And nice. they put uh, those, um, they put lighthouses all around them <laughs> and make a reverse <laughs> univibe for ships <laughs> worn towards it their cargo is removed sold on the black market and the proceeds given to me and Dan in the form of I didn't think you could do it disgusting I money I didn't think that you could top it you have I'm s it feels wrong to say but I'm so proud of you <laughs> I fundamentally misunderstood what an LDR was there for a minute as well <laughs> the lighthouses were the wrong component <laughs> Oh, mate. Anyway. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So, yes, that, that's what the links will do. Uh, guaranteed. Let's make us rich. Also, uh, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your support, guys. Thank you so much. Um, join us on Monday, uh, Monday evening, 5 p.m. Uh, GMT. 
BST. BST even? Yeah. What's GMT? GMT is Greenwich Mean Time. BST is British Summer Time. Okay. Where's Greenwich? Uh, Greenwich is the home of time. Time began. Sweetwater phoned up Greenwich and said, you are the home of time. Right. No, because uh, we're an hour ahead. It's uh, daylight saving. Okay. Daylight unsaving. So five o'clock. Just work out when that is and, and we'll, we'll be here uh, for a live chat for a couple of hours and five and we'll, we'll uh, go through all this and see what you think and uh, see about your experiences with this stuff. Fascinating. Indeed. Yeah. Okay. Have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you on Monday. Cheers, Cheers everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.